Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about a question I got asked about indirect addressing and how I was using it in a state machine. So um, in this instance, this would be this move instruction right here. So um, this would be talking about uh, basically this indirect addressing called uh, machine underscore state number. And then that's going to load into an array. It's going to this number inside of the brackets is going to point to that section in the array and that array just happens to be a 13. Uh, you can make it as big as you want to or small as you want to it, uh, basically when it comes down to it as long as it accommodates how many states you are going to use. Now um, in this atmosphere right that's how I'm using it. So uh, keep in mind this is a, a real world example right I'm going to show you this actually running on this, this um, actual robot but this right here is the going to be indirectly pointing to the array. The array value I've chose to use in uh, binary code decimal so that the output of the array is going to come back and give the output down here as far as the destination. Now it kind of looks deceiving right here because it says it's a 2 right here but if you hover above, above this right here it says the current value of state underscore machine number or no, uh, no right here it's pointed to three. So, in the, if we look at the uh, the array, we open up the array. We can come into to the array and we look at the third array, and that's pointed to it's right here. Well, this what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, I want to use the first bit. Okay, I want to use the first bit, and that's going to be in binary coded decimal. That's going to be equated to two. Okay, so when when you do the binary and you and the, the decimal value of that specific um, that specific value is going to be two. Okay, so that's why you see a two in there currently right now, and that's why you also see this bit right here, which is state output underscore one. That's why that's on because state output right here is being aliased right here. Okay, so just keep in mind this has a value of two, which is coming back over here giving the it's turning on that bit and I could show you that by easily coming over here and equating that to the binary coded decimal right here so right here we're looking at again the decimal is two okay but the bit that's used to get that binary coded or to get that that decimal uh, coded out binary and binary it would skip zero and go to one that's how you would get two Okay, so what I've chose to do is I've chose to do binary coded decimal for all of my bits. So if you look at my array, okay, when you look at my array right here, you come over here and we're going to monitor, you're going to see it goes from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32 to 64. And you might not, you might, some of you guys might be seeing a pattern here. And this is, uh, again, the binary coded decimal stepping up each bit. Uh, in a 128, a 256, 512, uh, and then 1024. Now each one of these again when it comes down to it is going to be firing a different bit like right here bit 4 or um, the uh, 4 right here for the decimal is going to be firing bit 2. Okay, And bit 8 or um, the decimal of 8 is going to be firing bit 3. Okay, And then 16 uh, is going to be firing bit 4. So that corresponds back over here to the bits we are going to fire in our state machine. Now I have this all pre-programmed through it with uh, again a finite uh, state machine basically written in uh, written in um, structure text right here and you'll, I'm going to actually start this so you can see it run. All right, so we're going to come over here now that we know how it works and we're going to go ahead and hit the start button and we're going to see how everything runs. Now I want you to watch this. Okay, You watch all the states go through their plat. So I want you to watch the state up here as this changes. Right. So every time we change states it's going to change the value. And it's going to change what's going to happen on the machine. Now you see it's on a 16 which is the bit 4. Okay. Now at this point it's at 32 which is down here. You see them start stair stepping through their way through. So the last bit and then come up here and now we're loading again right so this is back to bit 8 which is bit 3 our decimal of 8 which is bit 3 and it's looking for that inductive switch as soon as that that uh, engine gets to the inductive switch it should come over here and finish and go to the next state then it goes down to this state 
Now, how am I doing that, really? Um, I'm doing that, again, through this uh, state decision engine right here, which I'm basically, it's just a case, uh, basically a case of, and then whatever that case is, I'm saying I have an if-then-else statement to basically say where I'm at in that process. And each one of these do, do correspond with what they're doing, like this one right here, state six or state five would be robot to pick to place. Um, this state six right here would be lift engine with robot. Uh, state seven would be uh, engine delivery. State eight would be, and you see how the process works, right? A little bit more complex than we've shown in the past. But the question was, again, the question, and I'm feeding my inputs to my state machine, all these inputs right here, into my state machine, they feed back to here. So you'll see this, like right here, if I were to search that bit out, right? If I were to search this bit right here out and go to cross-reference, you would see it's being triggered up here, but it's being utilized in here. So when it comes to state six, when it comes to, when it comes all the way to state six, it's going to transfer down to the next state, right? As soon as that bit happens. So, but what we were talking about, and not to get off, off the subject too much, was the way a indirect addressing works using a move function as I was using it. Now keep in mind, I have an array. And my array, again, my array value is 13. Okay, so I have 13 dents. Now, uh, I chose not to use the very first three for the simple fact of uh, basically keeping things uh, a little bit different than most people would do it. Uh, when it comes down to it, this is something that you uh, need to understand the way a state machine would be programmed. Uh, so what I'm doing in the, those specific areas is I'm saying, okay, my in my controls uh, state these inputs right here would be one, two, and three, I chose to ignore. So what's happening right here is I'm choosing to ignore those right here. So I'm starting my whole system on air on array three. So when I'm in state three, when the machine is in state three, right? Like right here, uh, let's go back up to here and let's see if we can't pull it up. So when this value up here, this value in machine underscore state zero is in a value of three, then it will be at the starting state. That will be in the ready, the system ready. Okay, right now it's currently at seven, which is the value of 32, and you see it stair-stepping its way through. Um, obviously, we, we're just using binary coded decimal at that point. It's pretty simple. Um, basically, on what bit we want to use, we're basically coming in utilizing that bit, right? So, but keep in mind, the destination is being derived from the source. The source is feeding the destination. So again, when it's hit 16, that means when it went to that array, when it was at six, it went to the number six array, and the, the value of 16 was in, in that array. Okay, and that's how we got, how we're getting these bits that we're using for each one of these. And you can see this stuff running um, as it goes through, like we'll come up to here, we'll wait for the engine to hit the the um, point right here where it's, it's at the, uh, uh, inductive mark. We'll watch this last one run. Um, being that we kind of proved that point home, we'll see that happening. Okay, so then when all these are satisfied, we're going to come back here. It's going to drop the engine down here. It's going to step through to this one. So you see how much more efficient and fast this uh, this type of state machine is. But uh, not only that, right? So if we wanted to stop it, we could. Uh, we come over here. I'm going to let this last cycle go through. Uh, once it started, I like to let it stop just so I can get my, my system back in focus. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm coming in and saying, okay, I'll let you finish out your process. But in the end, when you get done with this last, when you're loading the last engine, this is the last one for the day. It could be the end of the shift. You never know. So all, all I'm saying here is this is going to be the last uh, crate we pick up just to show you in this this example. But again, the the focus here was this right here is dragging this up right so view if we go over here to view you can easily tell the state or, or the machine decision array okay 
So whatever's in the machine underscore state zero is going to be pointing to that section in that array. And that section, in this case, it's two, right? Or in this case, it's actually state three. So three is what the value is of that. So we're going to be coming over here and we're going to be looking at state three. And we're going to be looking at the array value of three, which is, has a value of two. Now in our terms, we're looking at the very first bit. And that's what's going to be relayed outward, right? That's going to be what's relayed out of the system, which is why state output dot one is on. Now, again, if, if you look at the state output, it's a two. But if you look at the state output in the binary form, right, of that decimal, then you look at output, uh, it, the two as a decimal, the one is the bit, right? So that's the bit that's on. That's what we're using. So that's just a, a real simple, simple way to use a, a, a you know, uh, indirect addressing with again this uh, this type scenario with a state machine um, kind of you see the inner workings and you see how things work and stuff like that I'm gonna put my uh, screen back down just a little bit because I like it kind of it's easier to see for me like that and we're gonna start the system back up all we're gonna do is hit the start button and the system will start back up so just like that, um, hopefully that gave you a lot of insight of how a indirect addressing work, um, especially with binary and understanding the way the uh, binary coded decimal works with your uh, decimal being your value enter, then that value has to be equated by so many bits in that, that specific uh, dent to get that value to be corresponded, right? In our, uh, in our uh, little session right here what we did is we said okay we're gonna keep it simple right we're gonna keep it very so simple like two would be the value of one four is obviously gonna be two eight is obviously gonna be three sixteen is obviously gonna be four so you see how the binary code steps this way up the the path of this using the single bit right so if you're using the single bit that's how it would step its way up um, and again you see it work it works fluently now this very code I've done many many different ways I've done it in a sequential function chart I did it in normal ladder logic um, and I've done it now in a state machine which is more of a finite state machine self kind of self-built um, kind of proprietary a little bit but when it comes down to it I wanted to, to highlight and show the fact of this indirect addressing where does it come from how does it work and then how does everything tie together because there was a large question about that on the YouTube channel and I wanted to make sure I gave a solid answer on that okay so what's inside of here is going to direct this way over to here where inside of the array so if currently if it's a five it's going to go to the fifth point in the array and give the value out okay so currently if it's a five it's going to go into the fifth value so five would be right here and it's going to give that uh, right here that would give the third bit okay so that's how simple that is to understand right so th things can be as complex or, or as easy as you want but when it rolls down to it understanding how things work how components work how different people program like I've programmed this very machine three or four different ways and you've, you've actually seen that if you've watched this channel or if you watch some of my things that all my videos that I've made probably about three or four different ways but when it comes down to it um, it's really about you know getting the scope of work making sure the scope of work happens making sure it's reliable and making sure it's easy to read now this I will say is not necessarily the easiest thing to read but it is it does achieve the first two it, it achieves the scope of work which is picking up the the uh, engines and then putting them in the crate right and then it comes in and moves the robot and does everything it's supposed to do right and then clears out and does production right so it does its scope of work right and then obviously you know making it reliable it is very reliable if I come over here and I hit the stop button or I turn off the start button it will stop it won't do anything so as far as that goes 100% reliable per scope of work. So with all that said, hopefully that was helpful. We'll see you guys on the next one.